So my name is Morten Grötli, and if you look at my name, you'll see I'm not Swedish. I'm from Norway. So that's explain the funny accent I have. Uh, I'm a professor in medicinal chemistry, and and the idea with this talk was to give you some ideas about how we develop antibiotics. We're going to look at some well-known antibiotics that we use today, and we're going to look a little bit into the crystal ball to see how the future looks too, and some of the problems associated with this. But first, we have to say, since I'm a medicinal chemist, then, what is a medicinal chemist? So I. I picked up this short sort of uh, definition, what it really is. And while you're looking at that, you can think that this does not only point towards the synthesis of compounds. It could be things we isolate from nature. But the thing is, we want to have bioactive compounds. And then we want to develop them into something that can be used to treat diseases. And in this case, antibiotics, we can treat bacteria infections. However, this goes for absolutely all drugs that you take orally. If you look at this slide, it basically shows that uh, you take the drug, maybe as a tablet, you swallow it, it goes down to your stomach, or it continues all the way into the intestines. But from both the stomach and the intestines, we have what we call absorption. That means that it takes the drug from the stomach or the intestines into the bloodstream, indicated by this tube here. So imagine this is your, your uh, blood vessels. Then everything that passes through the blood vessels is filtered to the liver. And in the liver, we have something called metabolism. And if you think, what is that? Well, it basically means that when the body faces compounds that it doesn't like being there, in the liver, we put on things that makes it really water-soluble so we can pee it out. That's the simple definition of metabolism. And uh, when they are metabolized, they travel usually to the kidney, and where we have the excretion, which means urine, we pee it out. Now, this travel here is super important because when you take an antibiotic, you take it as a tablet normally, it's distributed in your whole body. And it means that it's the blood that is the transport, transportation system that brings it around in the body. If we focus a little bit on what's going on in the stomach or the intestines, we will have this what we call absorption. And on this illustration, if you imagine this here is the cell membrane you have in your stomach or intestines. And these uh, circles, triangles, and squares are molecules that we want to bring into the bloodstream. Now, how do they travel from the stomach and intestines into the blood? Well, if we make it simple, we say we usually have three types of mechanism for that. It's something called passive diffusion. It just goes by itself. We have something called facilitated diffusion, which means that there are some proteins that helps the molecules to go across the membrane. And we have what we call active transport, which means there are proteins that use energy, ATP, to pull them over. There are some other variants too, but these are the three main things. And these two are called passive. This is active transport. And that's super important. If that doesn't happen, the drug will not be distributed in your body. It won't find its target, in this case, bacteria. This slide here is to, to illustrate another important point. If the blood is your transportation system, what sort of properties does the molecule have to, to, or what does it need to have in order to like to be in blood? And if you think about it, blood is roughly water with some proteins, meaning if a drug is not soluble in blood, water, it won't be transported. I illustrate that with just looking at the sugar molecule. This is glucose. And each of these dotted lines means that it binds to water. 
So water solubilizes this drug and makes sure it get transported. Now, glucose is just not a drug, it's just sugar. But imagine that this can also be an antibiotic. This sort of property that it's soluble in water or in blood is very important. Otherwise, no transportation occurs. Then you then think about that and say, hmm, it has to be water soluble. If I go back then and say, if I cross the cell membrane, that's lipids. That's very basically just fat. So it means that the compound that's going to be absorbed and transported had to have some lipophilicity to travel across the cell membrane. But it also needs to be soluble in water, otherwise no transportation. So basically, if you summarize that, then we can say that uh, if we have compounds that are lipophilic, they will sure cross the cell membrane very efficiently, but they might not be soluble enough to have efficient transportation. And if we have something that is really water soluble, it usually becomes too polar to actually travel efficiently over the cell membrane. So it has to be balanced. We have to think about both things when we design or develop drugs. They have to be lipophilic, but also water soluble.